Oké, okay, goeie naam. Dit is die tweede geleentheid van ons gesprek oor gerechtigheid in die samenleving. Uh, ek sê welkom aan die welgelegen met lidmate en gasten wat inskakel ook op Zoom. Um, ons gaan die gesprek in Engels voer, terwille van die paneellede. So as enige iemand hier in die kerk of op Zoom een vraag in Afrikaans wil vraag, voel welkom om het te doen. Uh, daar is ook uh, op Zoom die geleentheid om in die chatfunksie ook vraag te vraag, as ons by die besprekingsgeleentheid kom. En dan sal ek graag ook vertaal na Engels toe as het nodig is. Ok, so in particular then, welcome to our two panel members at this stage. Uh, we have uh, Mulana Appleby. Um, I am going to ask uh, the two guests to introduce themselves in a minute. But Mulana Appleby is uh, involved at the Muslim Judicial Council. And if I understand correctly, uh, Mulana, you are also uh, uh, the spiritual leader at one of the mosques in Cape Town. Um, so you can get uh, the opportunity to say a little bit more about that in a minute. And then I also welcome Professor Leonard Suransky. Um, he's for, from the Jewish tradition. Uh, Professor Suransky is uh, somebody who has uh, traveled the world, who has been an international scholar also um, uh, for uh, quite a while in his career and is still involved also at the Webster University in Ghana. Uh, he's a professor in international relations, but of Jewish uh, descent and also a practicing Jew. And uh, we are so glad that we have uh, both Mulana Appleby and uh, Professor Suransky as part of our panel tonight. I think it is an historic occasion for us in our Christian congregation to have people of other faiths all also involved here. And of course, it would have been great to have you also here in person, but the COVID monster, of course, uh, uh, kill those aspirations as well. So uh, we are happy that we can continue at least then in a virtual format. And I'm very glad that uh, you were willing to do so. And uh, I thank you for your patience also uh, on this. Okay, so I've given the opportunity, I've indicated to the panel members that uh, they can introduce themselves uh, in, a, in about a three minutes just to position themselves in their religious communities in Cape Town and what they do and where they do it. And then from there, go over to the section on, on justice. I've asked them the two questions, namely, what resources do you find in your own tradition which uh, uh, help you reflect on the issue of justice in your own community? And then also, secondly, how do you see, uh, should justice be practiced uh, also in, in, in the community? So uh, initially I thought that I could uh, introduce the three religions in chronological order, the oldest one, namely Hinduism first, but Guru Krishna is still not online. So what I'm going to do is to ask Professor Suransky to go first and then Mulana Appleby. Um, so Professor Suransky, over to you and uh, to introduce yourself and also give your perspectives on, on justice in society. Okay, so uh, you've already done a good job telling people uh, who I am and where I come from. Uh, my synagogue, or shul as we call it, is uh, Morasha in uh, Seapoint. And that is a shul that burnt down about a year ago. And COVID has held us back from uh, rebuilding it. Um, in time for the big, big uh, moment in our year, which is Rosh Hashanah, the, the New Year, the Jewish New Year, and then uh, Yom Kippur, our most serious holiday, when we fast for 25 hours. Uh, very, very little compared to, to my Muslim brother over there, where they, they fast for a whole month. So uh, on, on the, you asked what resources I'm using. I'm using our, our Bible, our Torah, and uh, some ancillary kind of documents that I've found in doing my research. And in, 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 the, in the process of talking about justice, I will, uh, I will get back to what its implications are for, for uh, our society today. And, and they're pretty serious, as you can imagine. So justice is at the core of, of Judaism, as it is of, I think, most religions or all religions. Um, I discovered something in, in doing my research that one of God's names is justice. I didn't know that, okay? But it makes a lot of sense to me uh, as, as I get into, into the issue. So when you say justice, 
or gerechtigheid. I'm glad to see that in Afrikaans, you've also got that word recht there, which uh, is different to the English, because in, in English you've got just, but it's not quite law. And yet, when we look at the, at the Hebrew tradition or the Jewish tradition, judges and appointing judges and selecting judges is at the heart of how a community, a society, achieves justice. Without judges, you're going to have difficulty having a just society. So one of the interesting things about the mosaic, Moses's way of, of, of uh, consolidating and founding justice in the Jewish religion uh, actually came from his father-in-law, because you probably remember that Moses had been involved in some... Uh, some killing when he was still a young man. Uh, in the first instance, he saw two Jews fighting with each other and he broke them up. And then the next day or a few days later, uh, there was an Egyptian man who was attacking a Jew and he killed him. And even though he was in the, in the confines of the, uh, uh, the king's uh, home, he, he had to flee. And he went to Midian, uh, to, to get away, to prevent being apprehended and to be, prevent being probably uh, um, executed. And there he uh, bumped into his future wife, Bipora, uh, who was the daughter of Jethro, who was a, a Midian priest. And this man played an important role in his life, so much so that many years later, when the Jews were wandering through the desert, um, and founding their nationhood and preparing to receive the Ten Commandments. Um, Jethro arrived, bringing Tsipora and his two, two boys along to meet him because they had stayed at home. And he looked at Moses and he said, how can you manage what you're doing? You spend your whole day talking to people and making judgments for people and settling uh, disputes. And you're exhausted. You're exhausting yourself. This doesn't work. What you must do is to make judges. Get some other people to help you. And I'm quoting now from Deuteronomy uh, chapter 16, verse 18. Judges and officers shall you appoint in all your cities, which Hashem, your God, gives you for your tribes, and they shall judge the people with righteous judgment. You shall not pervert judgment. You shall not respect someone's presence and you shall not accept a bribe. So this word bribe reoccurs. And in these times in South Africa, we know all about bribes and corruption. You shall not accept a bribe for the bribe will blind the eyes of the wise and make just words crooked. So if you are bribing someone, if you're corrupting someone, you're making their words crooked. And then there's that famous phrase in Hebrew, tzedek, tzedek, rak tirdof. Righteousness or justice, righteousness shall you pursue. In other words, there's an, there's an order from God to pursue justice as one of the main things that we do in our lives. And if you pursue justice and righteousness, you will live and possess the land of Hashem, your God, which he gives to you. So this theme of justice is all over the show. I'm quoting now from Deuteronomy chapter 1, number 17. You shall not show favoritism in judgment. Small and great alike shall you hear. You shall not tremble before any man for the judgment is God's. So here he's saying something very interesting, that when you're a judge, when you're practicing justice, you are actually representing God. You, you are taking on some of the role of God. That is how, how special and sacred the, the job of, of, of a judge is. And you must show no favoritism whether the person is rich or poor, small or great, you should not be afraid. You should not tremble before any man. 
And now there's another very interesting and important dimension of how to practice just justice. There is, a, as you all know, uh, and, and many of you are, are, are familiar with the Bible, there are three people that continually we are told not to prejudice, not the orphan, not the widow, and not the stranger. And I'm quoting now from Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 24, 17. You shall not pervert the judgment due to a stranger. Another word is to a foreigner or an orphan who is fatherless. You shall not take the garment of a widow as a pledge. You shall remember that you were a slave in Egypt and Hashem, your God, redeemed you from there. Therefore, I command you to do this thing. So this theme of not prejudicing, not shortchanging, not harming people who are weak in the society, the stranger who's a foreigner, he's come across the borders of South Africa to try and make a better living, or he's fleeing from, from a conflict. Don't prejudice him. Don't treat him differently to yourself. And in the same way, the orphan or the widow. In this particular uh, excerpt, they say, don't take her garment as a pledge. She's got nothing. So don't take her, her only clothes away from her. I'm quoting now from Isaiah, who's one of my favorite uh, prophets. Uh, Devote yourselves to justice. Aid the wronged. Uphold the rights of the orphan. Defend the cause of the widow. Devote yourselves to justice. And I must say, uh, if I may, uh, if we're thinking about our country, think about how hard it was in the bad old days of apartheid to stand up and devote yourselves to justice. There are not many of us in any society at any time who are prepared to have the courage to stand up and say, this is wrong. And that is what God expects of us. And here's another quote from Exodus 23, verses 6 to 9. Distance yourself from a false word. So don't, don't get involved with lies. And I've just been watching CNN and, and Mr. Trump saying, how dare you, how dare you criticize me for lying? And we know that he's told more lies than anyone can count. Distance yourself from a false word. Do not execute the innocent and the righteous, for I shall not exonerate the wicked. Do not accept a bribe, for the bribe will blind those who see and corrupt words that are just. Do not oppress a stranger. You know the feelings of a stranger. And then lastly, we have this word that comes from the Hebrew word for justice, which is tzedek, 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 raktirdo, pursue justice. And from that word, we have a beautiful word, word tzaddik. Tzaddik is a person who is righteous. So we say, if there's someone in our community who's amazingly godly, who's amazingly ready to share, who's, who, who helps others, who is uh, very, uh, I'm looking for a word now, a person who, who, who does not elevate himself, who does not try and, 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 and make himself big in the community. That is a tzaddik. But there's another word that comes from the same root, tzedakah. Tzedakah is what we give to the people in our community who do not have what we have. Tzedakah, it exists also in Arabic, and it's a very similar word. And it's a matter of do, giving, the, the English word is charity, but it's the wrong word. Charity is not what we mean. We're saying do something righteous for the people who you see on the streets of South Africa today who have no employment because of COVID more than ever. 
who have no money, who have no food, who have no shelter, Sadaka says, go out and help those people because that is what God wants you to do. And then some of my friends say to me, look, I don't have much. Why should I give to someone who I, who I meet walking in the street? And the answer is, that's not yours. Whatever you've got, you got from God. So what you're passing on is a gift from God. It does not belong to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Suransky. And of course, many of what you've said also has a very familiar tone for us in the Christian tradition because we share also the Hebrew Bible with, uh, with uh, Judaism. Um, Mulana Appleby, I would like you then to switch on your mic and your camera and give us the same kind of perspectives then. Uh, what resources do you use in Islam and how do you see this being practiced in society? Uh, and, but first tell us a little bit more about yourself. You can introduce yourself much better than I can do. Okay, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, myself, uh, I've, I'm a member of the Muslim Judicial Council. I was employed there for 14 years uh, at the offices. Um, I have been involved in interfaith uh, fora, uh, and so I have a relationship with many of our faith communities uh, across South Africa and Cape Town, Western Cape. Um, I'm imam for about 10 years, 11 years at uh, in Loops, Loop Street. It mosque, you know, it mosque, but uh, I enjoy the smallness of the congregation. And uh, yeah, I, I, that's basically what I, as a short introduction to myself. Uh, regarding uh, justice, um, <clears throat> justice in Islam, first of all, um, when we're researching about Islam and the concepts that is to be found in Islam, we reference obviously uh, the Quran, uh, that is our uh, holy book, a scripture. And obviously, we look at the uh, hadith or the words of the or the sayings of the prophet of his, uh, the final prophet of Islam, as we understand, uh, Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, and all the prophets. And then, obviously, we look at um, our history also and our scholarly works as references, which is basically in jurisprudence. But because of uh, the, the talk for tonight is very short and brief. So I will just uh, touch on a few points just to give us understanding of uh, justice. Uh, in Islam, uh, first, one of the attributes of uh, Allah or God is Al-Adl, and that means uh, the one who is just or justice, uh, the just. And uh, the, the, the Quran makes, uh, gives a description of what is Is justice and to be of those and in, in the Quran there is um, a reference made to a particular verse um, which states that be just because that is the closest indication of piety and uh, having God fearingness and God consciousness so this for me is a very uh, some symbolic meaning a deep meaning because to be just <clears throat> And that is a reflection of one's piety. It is only possible for someone to be just as the Quran describes it in the, in, in the verse that uh, precedes uh, that description. It says that, oh, you believe, be just and, and be a witness and stand clearly out in justice, even if it be against your own selves, against your parents, against uh, your relatives and uh, do not follow your uh, desires. And this is profound because even against your own self, this means in actual fact that to be just is actually to be, to embody the divine uh, understanding of justice. And this means that even my own self, my own desires, my own perspectives must be sacrificed and it should be subdued so that the the justice that is uh, one of the attributes of a God uh, should shine forth and it will bring about a society which
Lana, sorry, it seems to me that your uh, internet connection is, is somewhat weak. Uh, you've cut out and frozen now for a while. Could you just uh, see on that side? Maybe it would be best also to uh, even put off your video and that we just have your voice because that will also save some data. Uh, if you can hear me. Okay, it seems that we have lost um, Mulana Appleby now. I hope that we get him back. Just a minute of patience. Hopefully we will get him back online and when he uh, connects again. Lana, I see that you are online again. Uh, could we just hear your voice? Maybe you should leave your camera off this time uh, because uh, it seems that your data link is, is somewhat weak. So let me just uh, hear if uh, you uh, can you just confirm whether you are there and whether you can hear me. Aha, there you are. Can Can you just unmute your microphone again? There you are. So, uh, can you hear me and uh, yeah, there you are yeah, unmuted now. Yeah. Sorry you froze. So maybe you can just uh, try to rephrase your last sentence and that then continue probably. for a few more minutes. Yeah. The, the example from an incident uh, that, that describes justice in, in the history of Islam. It is mentioned that uh, in Kufa, one of the places that we know now about in Iraq, that Ali bin Abi Talib, uh, he brought a issue to the court, which was about a, a sword um, or a, an item that he said belonged to himself. So the judge asked him, can you bring a witness to testify that the object that you have is, uh, or that you say was stolen from you, actually belongs to you? So he says, yes, my son will be the witness. And uh, the judge said, no, the son cannot be your witness because he's a bias. So it was not uh, accepted in the court, or the judge didn't accept the testimony of the only witness that he brought and so this was rejected, even though he was a caliph of the time, meaning he was a political ruler of, of the region. And this uh, incident or, or this uh, st narrative story encapsulates the, the, the kind of understanding of justice uh, that is uh, supposed to exist in uh, Islam amongst Muslims uh, in society is where the, the, the idea of no individual bias should override uh, the, the core understanding of justice or the essence of justice and that there is, and, and, and the phrase that is given or description that is explained in Islamic terminology, what is justice, is placing the proper thing in its correct position. Meaning that uh, you, you place an object where it's supposed to be. And to be unjust or to commit an injustice is to place uh, an object in its in an incorrect position. And, and this is significant because it is really about 
being just is about putting everything in its proper place, organized in its uh, correct um, protocol being observed. And this is what we basically need to envisage about Islam and about justice in Islam. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mulana. That's, uh, it's great that we got you back online and thank you for that last illustration as well. Uh, what was uh, for me quite striking in the two presentations that we have heard now is how the understanding of justice in both traditions is a very, uh, let me call it a very practical one. I mean, there are certain rules and regulations in the scriptures that you, that you consider holy and those are very clear in how you should also uh, conduct yourself in, in society. Uh, if I just uh, make a comparison with, uh, with the um, understanding in many Christian traditions is that it's first of all sort of more a spiritual concept and only then after that we come to ask ourselves, so what does this mean in practice also in society, which um, I find quite, a, quite an interesting um, well, a difference maybe in the way in which we approach justice, uh, but that I find also quite refreshing that it is for you from your scriptures uh, in a certain sense immediately clear. This is how one should also uh, participate in society so that everything can be in its right place so that the widows, the orphans, the poor and so on could uh, also have a place to live and have a livelihood. Uh, so uh, that's just one observation from my side. Maybe I should open it at this stage then also to those who would like to participate um, in the chat box for those who want to do so. Um, those uh, who are tuned in on Zoom, if you want to leave a message or if you want to ask your question in person, you are of course also welcome to just unmute your microphone and ask your, your question. Uh, there is a way in which you can also put up your hand, um, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just... Um, uh, get the chat box done. There is a, where is it now? There, I can't find it right. now, so you will probably also not find it. But uh, yeah. the, the, the best is that if you want to, to make a contribution, just uh, unmute your microphone. Professor Siransky, I see that you have a thumbs up, so let's use that as the first try of a hands up. So do you want to, to ask something or make a comment? Uh, I was looking for it so that I could uh, show you where it is. <laughs> It's okay. on that bottom panel, um, just the very right-hand side before you go to leave, which I hope nobody is going to press now. We need yeah. all of us <laughs> to do this. So I was just uh, illustrating. Okay, good. No, thank you. But there's, in any case, on reactions and so on, you can see there's even a little thumbs up if you want to use that. But let's see, anybody here in church uh, who wants to ask a question or anybody was tuned in or in the chat box you're welcome and uh, to ask a question to any one of the participants or to make a comment okay it seems that our our well, members are very very uh, 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 <laughs> very uh, maybe scared even to ask questions to people from other traditions. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I hope not. Let me try this. Um, yes, Professor Milana, Milana Appleby said, um, to be just is to embody justness. I thought that was terrific. That's a beautiful thing. To be just is to embody justness, to, to make yourself a just person. And that relates to the fact that the, the, the notion that we are created in the image of God. And we should aspire to be as much as we can as fragile humans like God. We can learn from what God has done uh, in, in our scriptures and, and aspire to be like him. So I really like that. I thought that was a, a, a beautiful concept. Hmm. 
Thank you for that. And uh, may I then maybe ask also, both of you are involved in the Cape Town Interfaith Initiative. And uh, I've uh, also attended on Zoom at the last uh, general meeting. And my impression was also that the Cape Town Interfaith uh, Initiative is very much involved in practical community service and bringing communities together and so on. And that it's not in the first place a forum where uh, people can sit and fight out all their doctrinal differences, but it's a place where people unite exactly in the practicing of justice and uh, uh, of the best that their religious communities can offer Cape Town. Uh, Mulana Appleby, maybe I can also prompt you a little bit. Uh, what initiatives are there, for example, in the Western Cape, where you know that uh, the Islam community, the Muslim community, as well as uh, 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 Jews and Christians and so on, are taking hands with other religious groups and where this is uh, put in practice what you have said. Is the question to me? Or? Yes, yeah. Do you have any examples that uh, you could mention from the Western Cape? Yeah, in the Western, uh, there's many uh, activities that take place at, uh, for example, the anti-corruption uh, campaign, uh, COVID corruption campaign. We know of uh, activist, activism and activities that takes place across the different faith communities and they all focus in <clears throat> redressing this uh, serious challenge that the, uh, the economy of South Africa. And this is an example of faith communities coming together and trying to uh, uh, re-establish the equilibrium, uh, the justice within the, the community and society. Yeah, it's uh, great. It was great to hear also last week when some statements were made also by the Christian communities as well as the broader religious communities uh, on this issue of corruption. Next week we will have a discussion also particularly from the business sector uh, and we will reflect on the issue of, uh, of corruption particularly. Uh, so that is, it's great to hear that the different communities are involved in this. Uh, Professor Suransky, may, may I ask you, I mean, and, the, uh, the, Jewish uh, uh, the Jewish community in Cape Town is a... Also, uh, because uh, I serve also on CEFC, uh, that's environmental. So again, I missed that last part. Uh, could you just repeat, Ulana? Yeah, on on set on set on Seth C, uh, I also serve, mm. and and that is to do with environmental issues, mm. and also we find that the different uh, faith communities are represented, and also assisting in uh, the nuclear uh, deal that is uh, mm. uh, also related to corruption, and um, <clears throat> this shows again the faith communities uh, stand. Lana, are you still there? It seems that Mulana Appleby's connection is again weak. Um, Seth say that he is referred to now, uh, I think is uh, uh, an organization worth taking note of. I mean, it's a, a small NGO but they happen to be the people who took uh, government to court also about the, the nuclear issues and man managed to stop the, uh, the, um, the building of nuclear, nuclear plants and so on uh, a few years ago. So it's quite interesting that, I mean, justice also for Mulana Appleby, it seems means then also to participate in environmental issues, not only in terms of corruption, but also in, in terms of environmental issues. So, Professor Suransky, can I also ask you, what are the views of, of Judaism on justice in, in the environment? We are talking about justice for people, but how do you see this um, also as a Jew? Uh, what, what does uh, justice uh, in the environment mean? Wow, well, we, we, we have the whole story right at the beginning of the, the Torah and the Bible telling us how God created the world and uh, they're, they're very interesting controversies about how, what, how to make sense of that in the 2020s, but that's not for this discussion. But studded throughout re reference to, to our earth, 
we are enjoined, we are asked, we are commanded to look after the world that God has given us and to, and to, and to preserve it and to carry on the job of his creation. So, so that's our role in the world to be, to be, um, to, 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 to take on the mantle of what he has started and continues to do because he's, God is still very present. Um, but we, we are part of the process of keeping this world and, and building this world. And of course, the evidence is that we're failing dismally, that we're, we're in great danger of destroying our world. And one of the beautiful things about the COVID period, and I'm sitting here on the, on, on the edge of the Atlantic, in those first three weeks, suddenly, the dolphins came to my front door every other day. It was as if they were saying, we understand you're going through hard times, and we hear, and every now and then a whale. Now, you know, we know that we're polluting this planet and that we're exhausting its resources in a way that is just unmanageable. And, and the beautiful thing about COVID is that it has put a break on us and, 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 and maybe trying to teach us, guys, you can't continue this way. So uh, from, from the Jewish perspective, preserving and looking after the planet and, and, and uh, being uh, as, as human beings, being the, the empowered to, 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 to look after, to be a guardian of the planet is very high. Thanks. And Mulana Appleby, that uh, uh, was a continuation of the fact that you said that you are also working at SAFSA and uh, was working uh, also for justice in the environment. I would uh, like to, to move the discussion a little bit further, and I'm going to, to ask a very difficult question now, but I, it seems to me that uh, well, let me first uh, say that the, the initiative for talking about justice in our congregation was actually coming also from the celebrations that we had in 2017 of uh, 500 years Protestantism. And from that, uh, our congregation also became very much aware of the fact that justice is one of the things that we should concentrate on in our own reflections. Now, uh, we have had a few uh, discussions also in the congregation, and the one thing that we uh, was quite uh, clear about is namely that justice is not something that we can sit and formulate in our little corner without doing it together with other church traditions and also other religious traditions, as well as together with the business world and so on, the public world out there. So that's, in a certain sense, uh, what uh, this discussion is also meant to be, is to help us to flesh out a little bit more and to deepen our understanding also of justice in this world. But I would like to, to, to move now to a, a sensitive question, and I admit that from the start, and uh, please feel free also if you uh, don't want to, to, to respond to this, but um, uh, if we look at justice also on a wider scale, a global scale, um, we have seen some attempts also in recent weeks to, to try to establish peace in the Middle East. Um, we know that it's a very sensitive uh, story for which uh, comes for centuries already. It's a difficult uh, situation in, in Israel and Palestine and how the Arab world uh, responds uh, and how other big uh, powers like uh, the Trumps of the United States and so on also uh, would uh, come into the picture. If you, have the, uh, if you feel comfortable to do so, could I ask Professor Suransky and then also Mulana Appleby if you can give us an, uh, some perspective on that international situation also from your own religious background? Mm. Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> now we're engaging. Now look, uh, as in any community, there are a variety of opinions about this uh, business. And uh, I meet once a month with a, a small group of people my age, in other words, elderly, mainly men, uh, usually men, talking about Israeli-Palestinian politics, um, and I had to make a presentation uh, maybe three weeks ago 
about the possible annexation of the occupied territories on the West. And uh, my position was very clearly opposed to that idea. And now it, it, it was supposed to happen on the 1st of July. And then Mr. Netanyahu, who is not someone that I particularly like or support, uh, withdrew because there was so much pressure globally against this. And now we have this manifestation of the deals with uh, the UAE and Bahrain uh, recently saying, okay, we prepared to deal with Israel. And the Palestinian side is saying, you're not supposed to do that. We, the deal, wa the agreement was that until Israel makes peace with Palestine, nobody else should, should engage with, with Israel. And uh, it's a very self-serving thing that's going on at the moment. And that is Mr. Trump wants to be reelected. And he's done dismally in his international foreign affairs thus far. And Mr. Netanyahu is up for injustice and corruption in Israel, and rightly so. And he's doing his damnedest to stay out of prison and to stay prime minister, which his people are revolting against it. There, there are incredible demonstrations against it. So my whole life, I've been opposed to, to the way in which we haven't managed to find a modus vivendi the Palestinian uh, brothers and sisters, who are our cousins, really, uh, to find a way of living together. And I have been appalled at what has happened over the 70 years that Israel has been a state in terms of the gradual taking of more and more land, which makes it impossible to have a settlement. So I'm on the side of saying we've got to find a way but I also am very dejected and pessimistic about any possibility at the moment of that happening. Thank you very much. And I appreciate your honesty also on the issue. Uh, Mulana Appleby, I see that you are there. You would like to give us a perspective as well? I must unmute. Could you just unmute your microphone again? There you are. It seems that your mic is. Yeah, you are on. Uh, if you uh, can, you just uh, speak up, then we can hear you. Lana Appleby, are you there? Let me just uh, stop your video and see whether that will uh, help with the data feed and that we can just listen to you. But it seems that even I'm not uh, in a position to do so. Oh, it seems to me that I've, I've disconnected uh, Mulana Appleby now, so I'm sorry for that. Um, Okay, uh, let's not, uh, if, if he comes back and wants to put his perspective on uh, also for us, then of course I will give him the opportunity to do so. But you know, iemand wat op dalk op die stadium een vraag het of een opmerking het, um, en weer eens moet nie uh, bang voel om het te doen nie, maar moet ook nie verplicht voel nie. Ek neem julle sien, ons het een gesprek wat sinvol is. Uh, so kom ons luister, as daar dalk iemand is wat wel uh, vraag wil vraag, uh, in the chat, of dan dear in front of your microphone on the schakel in in your vraag the vraag. Sima? Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so I'm going to translate the remark that is made. It's sort of a more an, a remark meant for us uh, as Christian communities and for us as congregation as well, that maybe during the apartheid time, the political system lasted for so long because uh, the political system was in cahoots also with particularly the Dutch Reformed Church, where the emphasis was very much on spiritual righteousness and not so much on community righteousness or, uh, say again, and on, on, on the society and uh, that it's quite interesting that, uh, I mean, even in the way in which we speak, the emphasis very much on, on sort of personal piety and not so much on uh, reaching out to the community. And when we do so, we do it under the uh, sort of under the, the name of paramartigheid, to be good to other people. While, uh, and that I think we have heard also from both speakers tonight that justice uh, in society becomes sort of an imperative. It's not just something that we just do while, because we want to be good to other people, but it's sort of an imperative which belongs to our faith. Uh, so that's a remark being made here. I don't know whether anyone wants uh, to respond to that, um, but uh, I think that is something that was prompted at least also by the discussion tonight. Okay, Professor Suransky, it seems that um, let me just see. Yeah, we have uh, Mulana Appleby. Uh, no, it seems that his connection is really uh, problematic tonight. He's uh, down again. So I'm, I'm not going to wait uh, for him to come back and to respond then, but I would like to, at this point, then bring our discussion to a, to a conclusion. And again, as I've said at the beginning, we've recorded this, and I think the perspectives that you shared with us, Professor Suransky, as well as Mulana Appleby, uh, are thought-provoking. They are also helping us to, to come to new perspectives in our own uh, traditions. Um, and uh, I mean, it prompts us also to think in another way about the issue of justice in, in society. So thank you very much for your contribution. We would like to uh, keep contact with you and hopefully one day we can invite you also to come and attend uh, our meetings here in person. Uh, if uh, I would like to also keep in contact with you about the, the shul in Seapoint, uh, I'm involved also in some initiatives of getting some Jewish and uh, Islam and Christian students and uh, uh, members of congregations together to read their scriptures together. And uh, mm -hmm. that's one of the places where I think we can really also learn from one another. Uh, not to emphasize the differences in our uh, different religions, but rather also to look at the communalities. Uh, we are, you mentioned that the Jews and Palestinians are actually, they are your cousins. In a certain sense, we can also say that Christians and Jews and Muslims are also one another's cousins in the sense that we go back on the same Abrahamic traditions uh, and we uh, share also quite a lot in terms of our holy scriptures. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for your participation tonight and the same also to Mulana Appleby. I will also convey our thanks to him in, uh, in, on phone, on telephone, when I uh, afterwards will make contact with him. Okay, and then thank you and all what you have done today. We have had a few technical problems. We have to go for the next Sunday. We have to go Professor Arnold Smit van die Besigheidsschool en vir Jans Knel, voormalige bestuurende directeur van, van de Stel, het ons as paneel, hulle al by het vanavond skelmpies ingeluister om te, om te sien hoe doen ons dit. Um, Arnold en Jan maak net doodseker dat jylle, jylle uh, internetkonneksies goed is en dan sien ons uit om jylle volgende zondag aan voor te stel en dat ons dan saam met mekaar uh, ook uh, die gesprek kan voeren. Mulana Appleby, I see you are there. If you can listen to us, I've said goodbye and my thank yous. I will make contact with you afterwards again. But thank you very much for your participation. And we end the recording and our meeting at this point. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye.